Hello and welcome to another OpenShift tutorial. In this video, we're gonna see how to install OpenShift with a Azure Quick Start. This should apply OpenShift Container Platform, the enterprise version, uh, with few clicks on Azure. So I have a working uh, account that that has access to Azure. I've already logged in on to my Azure CLI. Uh, if I do this, AZ account show, it shows my account permission. So if you're not logged in, you just need to do AZ login and then log into your account from the Azure CLI. And then you should have enough resources, uh, access to enough resources on Azure so that you can spin up at least uh, three or four VMs, I guess. Um, uh, it takes for OpenShift cluster to spin up. So make sure you have enough resources on your Azure account. With that, let's get started. The documentation uh, is already uh, put up on this readme page. It's Debian master slash OpenShift examples. And then you have the simple uh, four or five steps process uh, to install OpenShift. So with that, let's get started. For Deploying OpenShift, you need a uh, resource group on Azure. So I'm going to create a resource group called OCPRG on West uh, US location. And then once we create the resource group, we need to create a key vault and then uh, create a key vault secret, which is based on a private key. Uh, in that in my case i'm using my private key uh, i suppose you can generate a private key and then you can use it so now you can see the resource group has been created let's go and create a key vault which is in the same location region and as well as tied to the resource group which we already created i call it as ocpkv and then you make sure you enable uh, template deployment equal to true. Uh, only then if the template that we are going to use will be able to access this uh, key vault. So with that, let me create this. And then we are going to create a secret onto that key vault using the SH private key. Uh, the reason why we do this is because this private key is going to be used for uh, setting up a passwordless authentication between based, based on uh, server with all the other uh, servers that are going to be provisioned so that OpenShift can go and install uh, OpenShift cluster with using an Ansible installer. That's the reason we need to generate this uh, secret. Looks like the uh, key, vault is, has been, key vault has been created. I'm going to create the secret now. And then once we are done with the secret, uh, all we need to do is create the deployment using parameters which are inside the params.json uh, which is this one let's take a close look at what is uh, params.json in this context and then we'll try to understand each of these parameter so the location that you see here must match the resource group that you mentioned. Uh, this is just a simple prefix for your cluster. So you can keep it OCP or OCP cluster name. And the admin username is nothing but the OpenShift admin username. Um, so when you log into OpenShift cluster, this will be your starting point uh, as a ad cluster administrator. And in this uh, cluster size you can ch choose small medium and then large 
uh, small means single master uh, multiple nodes and uh, medium will start from three masters so I stick with small and the open shift password is nothing but the cluster password uh, that you want to have uh, which is able to log into the OpenShift cluster so it's a password for this admin user account and then uh, the second next one is RHM username RHM username is nothing but your Red Hat uh, login which has OpenShift subscri subscriptions and RHM password is nothing but your Red Hat subscription password and the pool ID that you see here is basically uh, pool ID, the entitlements that you get from Red Hat uh, most of the admin folks already know this like what, what exactly is the Red Hat pool ID uh, you just need to get the channel pool ID and then put it here which is basically your um, which is under your SKU and then the next one is the uh, SSH public key uh, which you wanna put so generally I use my public key which matched with the uh, private key that I already cre created so make sure you have the same public key here and then the OCP key vault resource group uh, is nothing but the uh, resource group that you created as part of the commands so just make sure you have the same thing same matching uh, resource group here I think it works without um, having the same resource group but just to keep it simple I have to use the same resource group and the key wall name is a key wall which we used uh, in the command line statement before uh, and the secret where we uploaded our private key so these all should match with the ones we already uh, created but the OpenShift cluster itself can be on a different uh, resource group but in this case they are on the same resource group uh, in my installation and you can keep this as false I'm not sure why uh, what's this flag is about and you can uh, ignore these two at at a client and then client secret uh, just make sure you put empty values in there uh, so that it won't throw any error uh, but these are essentially for the Azure uh, Active Directory uh, you don't need to provide them and the default subdomain type is either you can choose uh, xip.io uh, which is basically offers a free domain name for all the IP addresses that you have uh, in my case I am using a custom subdomain uh, which is xfc.io which I own but as of now this xfc.io is not pointed to any of the um, Azure instances and the plan is basically after the installation is done this xfc.io needs to point to the master or the uh, router where your OpenShift cluster is sitting so just um, this, this is like a, a post installation activity so even if you give anything here the installation won't break uh, only thing is if you create some applications and expose routes uh, it may not work until you set up this uh, domain to the right uh, host names on your Azure cluster with that let's go and uh, install our OpenShift cluster all we need to do is execute this command and that will kick off a OpenShift cluster installation uh, what we are doing here is we are using the same resource group here uh, OCP Archie and then here's a template which is a certified template uh, present on Azure and the same template address I have used here so it's really like instead of going into the UI and then typing OpenShift uh, BYOL uh, the same template I have used it in here okay and then we need to supply the params.json which we updated in my case uh, I'm going to update the params.json and then kick off this OpenShift deployment I already have a backup uh, params.json in my openship uh, in my folder so I'm going to use it just to save some time as your quick start so this is my 
params.json which already has all the values so I'm going to use it alright and then I kick off this deployment so that's all you need uh, for installing OpenShift onto Azure uh, to be honest um, so if things go wrong uh, there are helper messages uh, in this uh, repository so Microsoft OpenShift container platform and then if you scroll down it shows what are the ex error messages corresponding to the error codes so it's all the way to the down so you can see if something goes wrong with your Red Hat subscription then the exit code is 3 and then um, if some, something goes wrong with your pool ID then it is 4 so there we have different exit codes for different kinds of uh, errors that you see uh, this is mostly for the troubleshoot but what I experienced is in most cases if you have everything right if, if the password and everything is right uh, it goes very well and then within uh, 20 minutes or to half an hour your cluster should be ready uh, for usage I will uh, pause this and then get back with a uh, running OpenShift cluster in few minutes but I want to show you some things as well uh, if you want to see the progress uh, click on dashboard and then a new deployment should be kicked, kicked off uh, if you go to resource groups and then select uh, OCP RG and then uh, go to deployments here and then you can see the different activities that are going on so these are mostly the infrastructure provisioning activities where uh, it provisions infra VM, node VMs and then the master VMs all the infrastructure related ones once these are done the OCP deployment activity will be, will be kicked off and this has various steps if you want to take a look what exactly is going on click on events and then it shows uh, under this e under the events uh, various activities so this is how uh, you can see what is going on in the OpenShift uh, in the Azure UI um, from the deployment perspective of the template but if you want to see if something went wrong um, and then you want to debug why it went wrong uh, like I said exit codes are the one way uh, but but on each machine you can go to this particular location varlib uh, wa agent custom scripts and download and then look at uh, folders and folders uh, inside these you will see either 0 or 1 uh, these are for different purposes that's that's what I've been told and in this in this folder you can see std error and std uh, log std out uh, error files like the files which capture std out and errors and then you can uh, take a look like maybe tail them and then look at what is going on inside so this happens on all all VMs okay so that's the kind of uh, some of the debugging aspects and as well as uh, deployment and then uh, looking at the uh, using the OpenShift uh, uh, templates and then as your deployment uh, progress and everything uh, just to understand what is going on we'll pause the video now and then get back once the installation is done OpenShift cluster deployment is now complete you can see the provision state is succeeded if you want to see uh, in the dashboard you can go to resource group and then select the resource group resource OCP Archie and then uh, look at the deployments and then OpenShift deployment is complete if you click on this and it, it shows output variables which is OpenShift console URL the best on uh, address and uh, master address and everything so we want to access the console URL click on this And then to log in, you have already supplied those usernames, username and password in the params.json.
will see a logged in and then enable to access registry in the default section and then also router now you can create user uh, namespaces and then users and so on if you want to access the master you should always go through the based on uh, vm so if you want to access it just copy this and then ssh so the number of keys in the machine is getting rid of them and then now you can access the based on station vm and then from there you can just ssh into the master vm which is OCP master zero and then all your open chip configuration will be in the CD HC origin master master dash config now you can update your public uh, host name and everything if you want to have a custom pub master public uh, url you can update it here and then just restart openshift master service that will update your end url just like this atomic openshift master that's all you need if you have a multi-master deployment you need to you need to restart APIs. If it is a single master, we just need to update like Atomic OpenShift Master. With that, uh, I will conclude the uh, video session. Thanks for watching.